Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's third day of the conference. Uh, people are tired, and I really appreciate you coming and you know learning about uh, what what I have to talk about. So and part of that is obviously uh, credit to Uber. So let's talk about that. At Uber, we our mission is to provide transportation as reliable as running water everywhere for everyone. So that's Uber. And this is me. My name is Sasha Oksankin. Uh, uh, I'm data analytics engineer at Uber. Um, here's a contact info QR code if you want to scan. Um, I'm working at a team that does experimentation. So we are, oh, Okay, hope I'm not getting too much trouble. Uh, so we, uh, we um, work to fuel Uber's innovation and uh, make, people, um, make it easy for people to release features, new features in the application and uh, make uh, the whole cycle uh, more controllable, more robust and uh, get some data out of that. Uh, it's part of a, my team is part of a bigger team which is a called Uber Data Platform, which fuels the whole data thing at Uber, uh, starting from, you know, getting the data to processing the data, including machine learning, deep learning, what have you. So it's kind of interesting that uh, experimentation platform um, at Uber was interested in getting getting metrics and uh, getting, getting high quality metrics for, uh, to do experimentation is kind of makes sense. Uh, I worked at LinkedIn before and we faced the same situation that metrics platform was initiated by experimentation team. So I'm, I'm as you can guess, I'm passionate about metrics, about uh, figuring out uh, business performance and uh, um, it will be interesting to know what, uh, uh, to have a show of hands, uh, who of you are dealing with metrics on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, either using them or uh, producing them, okay? A lot of people. So, and then um, another question is, uh, how many of you think that uh, the whole metric process need to be uh, organized and centralized within your company. So we have uh, quite a bit of agreement here. And how many of you uh, have that or think uh, or working on the solution to do that? Awesome. Okay. So so we're, um, we are we're kind of in sync here. And this talk is about building company-wide metric platform and uh, how it is really possible and even practical and uh, everybody should do it. So let's talk about that. This agenda, why to do it, uh, the technology uh, that we did for our solution and the process that, that runs with that, we'll talk about that more and uh, hopefully some conclusion. So, metrics. What do we need from metrics in the, in the company? So, the alignment is, is the first important thing. So, who is familiar with this picture on the right? Some people are. So, this, is, uh, this picture is from a fable from a classic, uh, uh, classic author of, uh, uh, a Russian author of uh, 18th and 19th century, Ivan Krylov. It's probably his most famous fable about this three nice, oh, sorry, oops, yeah, uh, three nice uh, animals that undertook to, uh, to take the carriage to some place. And uh, everyone was uh, kind of uh, had a different idea of what direction it should go. So, you know, you all know geometry. Uh, the, the fable ends that the, the carriage is at the same place where it started. So we don't want to happen that in our company. 
And that's why we want uh, all you know, people who work on in a data-driven manner to optimize metrics, we want to optimize the same met set of metrics because if we don't, then that's what happens. Another thing we want from the metrics is to be reliable to, to, uh, to be able to trust the data. So uh, how, do you, uh, how do you achieve the re reliability is, is a big, big question. And uh, part of that is like imagine uh, I do my little metric, which I think is good, and you do your, your little metric that you think is good, and then they are kind of similar, but you do your testing and you do your fixing, and I do my testing and I do my fixing. So we're kind of spending twice as more time and uh, not necessarily getting the same result. So if you both you and I uh, working within the limits of the same platform, that there's, there's much more chance that uh, the, uh, the code, the metric, it will be uh, kind of, uh, uh, of higher quality. So uh, the, rel the reliability will be, uh, will be better. Or in other words, uh, given enough eyeballs, all the, all the bugs are shallow, right? So that's, uh, that's reliable. Now, when you have a platform, you usually have a, a dedicated team or some, some people who work on that and uh, do that. So, uh, and having, having dedicated people, it's always, uh, there's somebody you can talk to. Uh, if, if something doesn't work, uh, they can help you fix it. So you end up with a, res uh, with a result that is uh, easy to trust. People easy, it's easy, easy for users, for people in the company to trust metrics if there, there's, a, uh, there's ownership behind it. So this is what, what we want from our uh, metrics. Now a little bit of, uh, about our situation. So Uber runs in over 550 cities in over 70 countries. And each one of the cities is a little bit of a little business by itself. So they have a um, signif significant level of independence. So they uh, take their own uh, decisions. They, they kind of affect their own pricing, do their own promotions and things like that. Uh, all this uh, compounded by the growth, you, see, you can see that uh, in first half of the uh, 2016, we did, we did as many rides as, as we did all the time before that. So uh, with this, uh, within this situation, it's really hard to kind of uh, uh, have, a, have a clear idea of what's, ha of what's happening. So this is our situation. And then uh, the question is how, how do you, in general, how you do, you, you know, uh, how do you make decisions like that? Who, who knows who is this person? Okay, so this is Peter Drucker, who's uh, credited with the phrase, if you cannot measure, you cannot improve. So in our case, the question is, how do we measure? And the answer is very simple. Okay, so let's build a platform that uh, will be used uh, throughout the company by all the people. And uh, hopefully that will provide this uh, communication telegraph be between different people in the company. Now, I want to I wanna point out that the platform is not only the, the code technology that runs, it is also people who, um, who are around it, who are using this technology, and uh, uh, the process that, that makes it all happen. And I would say that getting the right pro process, um, Getting the right process is as important or maybe even more, more important than get, get the, techno the technology right. So, uh, but we uh, start, start with the technology. This is just a very high level overview of our system. Um, I, I, would, I would go into details of each one of those, but I just wanted to, to give you the kind of uh, overall idea of what it is. So basically, we have two sides. We have people who are writing metric definitions, and uh, uh, they are organized in a little organization called Metric Council. Uh, we have people who are using uh, the metrics uh, by, by different uh, BI tools. 
by running different BI tools. Now the definitions uh, are written in DSL and we'll talk about that. Uh, stored in the registry and this registry is used by multiple engines. Uh, so the same definition is used by different uh, engines uh, that, that they, they use their own data, data stores. Uh, uh, when users uh, send queries uh, for data. So they basically query, query data and these engines uh, uh, produce data for them. So, so one thing to note about it is that it, it is less of a like, pipeline thinking where you know, we, I just spill data somewhere and then I process it and I get data out. It's more, more like we think about it more like a query engine uh, that you, I send request and then I get the data back. It fits our model better because uh, of high variability in what different people may want from, from the system. All right, so metrics platform, as I said, we have uh, multiple teams in the company and uh, uh, they have uh, their own uh, 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 high level of independence. So we, uh, we want them to use our platform. We want everybody to use uh, our platform, but we cannot force them to use our platform. So the way we can make them use, use the platform is to make it so ridiculously easy and uh, uh, beneficial to use the platform that they, they will simply have no other choice. So that's, that's what we want from our platform, to be easy and powerful, to be well integrated into the whole company uh, infrastructure, data infrastructure, and we want process, but we want process lightweight so that people won't, won't spend a lot of time and be bothered by, by this process, right? Okay, so let's just uh, dive into metrics. So this is one, one of the example. Uh, the metric is uh, how many hours uh, drivers spend logged in and active in the system, like doing, doing real trips, right? And uh, assume, so this is hypothetical, hypothetical uh, SQL definition. Let's assume that we come up with this, uh, with this definition and, and it works, produce metrics, all, all fine. Now, somebody else says, okay, great. So this, this uh, metric works. This is, by the way, this is like the, the, the core of this metric, which is essentially the formula that uh, calculates that. That's, so, so somebody comes and says, okay, I also need in a certain, I need this metric in, the same, in a certain range of dates. Okay, so they add uh, date condition to the SQL, copy the SQL and add uh, date condition to that. And then somebody else says, okay, but I need this in the city of San Francisco. So they do a join and add another condition. And then somebody else says, okay, I'm experimentation team. I need, I need to join it with the experiment and uh, filter on my experiment, right? So they, they have another copy of the same SQL. And then yet another person comes and, and uh, does something else like the mo model, what, what, what is the type of driver? And uh, people keep, keep you know, breaking it down and keep copying these uh, SQLs and uh, uh, running them. So what we end up with, uh, the whole thing is uh, complicated. So these SQLs may grow to literally hundreds of lines of uh, SQL. Um, it, is, uh, it is hard to manage because now there are multiple copies of this. And uh, you know, if, if the definition changes, you need to go and change all these copies. And then also, uh, sometimes data schema change, changes, for example. So input schema changes, it breaks the SQL. So now it breaks like uh, 15 different SQLs and uh, you need to identify all these users and, and figure it out. So that's, that's uh, uh, actually answer to, uh, to a question of, okay, so why just not to use SQL? Just write a metric in SQL, everything will be fine. So not so, not so much. Okay, yes, so this is probably the most complicated slide of this, but we actually need to get through this uh, because we need to understand how's, how's this whole uh, process goes. So uh, again, 
we have we have one of the versions of this in our hypothetical uh, sequel. So we have a formula. We have a uh, um, joins that need to happen, and we have filters and uh, uh, and and we have group by CD of the driver. So that's 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 one of the examples. So. Uh, here's, here are the things that happen in here. So there are multiple inputs, multiple parts of the expression, and multiple inputs. And each one of these inputs uh, sh should, be, should be considered as its own kind of little pipeline. Um, so then you, you apply certain transformation to this, uh, uh, to this input. So for example, you take minutes active and divide it by 60 to, to, to get to hours active if you want, right? So the, the interesting part is that even though the definition is here, the uh, part of it, like, like it's a simple, nice formula, but part of it happens at this step before aggregation and, uh, and the other part happens after the aggregation. So, uh, so when we start looking into how, how it all uh, um, uh, broken down, it's uh, basically the, the, whole, uh, the whole formula uh, is is uh, spread over over uh, several several parts in the process. So uh, looking at this, um, we we actually uh, came up came up with uh, with ideas, which is one of the core ideas of this whole system, and uh, um, I, I consider it kind of uh, very important. Is that uh, we'll be much better off if we uh, uh, split the, the, this definition into uh, two parts. One part, one part is uh, the formula, and the other part is actually conditions, filters, and uh, 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 group buys that, that we apply to this. So, so doing this uh, is going to, to reduce a lot of complexity out of the system because we just take this definition, store it in the registry, like I, like I showed, and uh, have it reviewed by multiple people, have it in a, in a very good shape, and then uh, people who need different ways of slicing and dicing this data, they, they could do so. But when they do so, they, they don't, they don't say, change the definition. If they change only the query, the, the definition stays the same. So that's, a, that's a one of the basic premises of uh, this, uh, uh, this platform, is that we, we can split uh, metric def uh, metrics into, uh, into uh, definition formula and the query to, to get the data. Now here's an interesting question. What language would I use uh, to do all this? You know, we at Uber use many languages, so I don't know, SQL? JavaScript, Go, I don't know. Does anybody have any ideas? What, Skull, Skull what? Yeah, let's try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so totally. Um, so uh, actually, uh, Scala makes it easy to make uh, DSLs. And, and this is um, uh, one of the reasons we use Scala for this. So basically, this definition is a valid or most of it, is a, is a valid, um, valid Scala expression. And then what we do is we were able to reduce this uh, metric definition to a really simple, straightforward way of describing, uh, describing the operations. And not only that, but then we also, uh, if, if we use a, a Scala, it is composable, so we can take this thing, call it some name, and then use it throughout multiple me uh, metrics. So, uh, so we can compose it. So that's that's a, uh, overall very very important uh, feature. So it's a composable and it's simple. And it's simple to a point that uh, people who you know are not engineers and not even data scientists, uh, business people are able to look at this uh, definition and say, yeah, okay, I, it, it makes sense. Or Maybe it doesn't make sense, but at least it provides the medium. It is simple. It was reduced in its complexity to a point where um, you can reason, all people in the company can reason about that. 
So what do we do with this afterwards? We, like, every, uh, like uh, in many cases in Scala, we just uh, uh, break it down into uh, parse tree. So this is uh, an example of parse tree. Each one of these nodes is uh, some, some, uh, some element of, the, of, a, of a class, some object, some instance of a class. And uh, uh, we just build parse tree of it, and then we walk this tree. Uh, we walk this tree to produce results, to produce some execution plan, uh, but also there are multiple ways we can, uh, we can use it for. So for example, on experimentation team, we need to do statistical analysis of metrics and figure out whether the change in the metrics done by an experiment is statistically significant. And uh, this uh, allows us having this parse tree in a way that we can process, allows us to look at the definition and say what type of definition is. The, uh, different, different definitions, di different formulas, there are, there are proportional uh, uh, metrics and there are ratio metrics and there are continuous metrics and each one of them uses different statistical method to, uh, to, to compute statistical significance. So having, having it in the parse tree allows us to, uh, to do it automatically. Uh, we, we are not yet there, but we hope to be, and to be able to, uh, uh, to, to calculate statistical significance automatically. So then, uh, the other part, as you remember, is a query. So query is also um, um, language, uh, the internal uh, DSL Scala, uh, in, built into Scala. And uh, uh, you can see that it is a little bit like SQL, right? Similar to, um, if you look at like data frames of Spark, they are also con uh, uh, They also look like a, they also are a DSL. So uh, in our case, the DSL is that. Um, so it, it is SQL-like, but but it's not. Uh, it's not totally uh, like SQL. For example, there are no from here and there are no joints here. So uh, the thing here is that we are able to, by having definition in the, as a parse tree, we're able to actually uh, analyze, uh, analyze the data schema and figure out for each one of those metrics what, what, are, what are the original tables or the data, data sources that it's coming from. And, uh, uh, when and in, in many cases, uh, and also we are able to figure out the joints that we need to do on the way in order to do that. So basically, the simplicity of that is uh, also it, it, it dramatically simplifies the uh, the writing queries for people who need that because uh, because they don't now they don't need to keep uh, you know the whole data scheme in their mind and say okay so the I go this, this way or I go this way, they just say, hey, I need, I need this thing and give it to me and I also need to break it down. And if it makes sense and if we, uh, we, can, uh, we, we provide it and, uh, and don't, don't ask any, any further questions. So that's, uh, that, that I think is uh, easy and powerful. Yes? You're, Yeah, so, so uh, the question was how, do we, how did we split a metric into formula and query? So we just, uh, that's, that's how we define our, our, uh, the, the DSL of our platform. Uh, we, we, uh, so this is, uh, the SQL is for demonstration, right? So it's, uh, it's not, not something that really works. What works is these things. So we're just saying, Okay, so here's your DSL to define the formula, and here's your DSL to run queries against this formula. And uh, we provide an environment for you where you can run these queries and get, get the data back. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Well, you're welcome to, uh, to come up to, after the talk. Yes. Multiple formulas into one query, not just a one single formula like this example. 
you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So, so the, yeah, absolutely. So, so the question is uh, what to do when you need multiple, uh, uh, multiple metrics in the same query, right? In one metric, multiple formulas combined with like one query, right? So uh, multiple formulas combined with one query. So, so, so this, is, this is the formula. And you can build as complex formula as you, as you wish. So if you need to add several things, you just take these things and do plus of them, right? A plus B plus C. Um, okay, maybe we'll okay, okay well, yeah, well, yeah let's, let's discuss it later. So, um, so this is, this is the, the formula query. And uh, yeah, so as far as... Uh, uh, integrating into 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 the system, I, I mentioned this a little bit, but I'll talk about it more. So we have a company-wide schema repository of all the data that is in uh, data la lake, and we take this uh, repository and then we extract table schemas from that, and from this we build kind of a Scala class. We generate Scala classes that that implement uh, uh, this that reflect these tables. And we'll also extract uh, relationships in a semi-automatic semi manner. In some, some uh, cases we can do it automatically, in some other cases we just write it up. And this is uh, basically, this goes into a big YAML file that, that uh, represents the schema. Uh, let's say, uh, yeah, let's call it engine configuration. And then when query comes in, there's engine core that looks at this configuration file, um, walks the schema, uh, and builds, uh, walks the graph of the schema based on what, what things we need from this and what, what breakdowns, what group buys, and, and so on, and then builds execution plan for that, which is basically a tree in memory. And then uh, this execution plan is uh, handed over to the engine for execution. So for example, uh, in, in case of uh, um, Spark engine, the execution plan is, uh, becomes simply a data frame, and then the, this data frame is sent for, uh, for execution. Actually, yeah, I have this to, yeah, so uh, uh, on this I have it on this slide, so basically, uh, this is this is the query, and then there is an engine that we we give the query, say, hey, convert it to data, uh, to a data frame, to Spark data frame, and then uh, we have a data frame in our hand, and then we just uh, um, store it, um, store store the result uh, somehow, or return it to the user. Okay, so that's the technology. All uh, easy, powerful, and integrated, but what about the process? So, uh, uh, again, to remind you, there are two types of people on, on, uh, in this part. So, so there, there are people who are writing uh, metric definitions, and there are people who are using this, uh, this engine to, to get the data. So, the, so this is about... So uh, people who are using uh, using metric definition. This is this is where we you know care most about the process. So we uh, we we have to give them give them tools so that their process will be lightweight. They will uh, it, it won't take too much of their time. So uh, like straightforward in a straightforward way, the uh, we. Uh, started by handling metrics in one big spreadsheet with all the uh, stuff and uh, and uh, do, uh, came up with a certain form of documentation uh, how to how to document the metrics and, and the discuss it. But then uh, over time we just came up with a, with a UI. Let's see how it works. Oops. Okay. Well, let me try again. Came up with a UI that helps to. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So so this UI it has a documentation. It has a um, search facility where I can look for metrics, 
Howard's, Howard's online. I have no metric, I, I can create one my own, my own and fill up all the, uh, all the attributes of it and create it. Um, fill the reviewers. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, most importantly, I need, um, yeah, this is, this is uh, like some, some subdivision of the library into metric pack, so that's the name of the metric pack. Um, and uh, also, also that I need to fill, uh, fill the formula, of course. So why am I so excited about this trivial, you know, form, form interface, uh, which, you know, a junior developer will do in a day? Um, the reason is that uh, it all helps to integrate into the whole, like, development process. So basically, we create a, a pull request or sort of a pull request in our internal uh, uh, development system. And then uh, people can, uh, we, we can leverage the whole um, development process, reviews, and uh, check it in. Um, so, so we were able to uh, leverage the knowledge of the people of this, this process, so they, it also, also kind of becomes lightweight for them. Because they say, okay, I, I know how to check in the code, I, how, to, how to review it. So by integrating this, is, uh, it makes things easier. Great, now I need to move. Man. Okay, how do I do this? Okay, so sum it up, easy, powerful, integrated, lightweight process. Uh, these are some of the groups in the, in the company that uh, will either use our metrics or we, uh, our platform or, or we plan to use. And uh, these are future directions, more adoption, of course. Um, improvement on the DSL, um, more engines, add, uh, we, we plan to add SQL engines like high presto vertica to it so uh, it's, um, it's easy to query. Real time is, uh, uh, is going to come um, next year sometime, at some time and we're also um, interested in the question of uh, whether we should uh, open source it. So, if you are you have interest in that or have opinion on that, please let us know. These are some ways to contact us. Uh, so, overall, building company-wide metric platform is possible. We consider it practical. Uh, we're working on it, and you should too. This is the team that uh, are working on this platform right now, and uh, there's a lot of interesting things we. Um, we need to do to it. Hiring right now. Get in touch. Any questions? We have one minute for questions. <laughs> yes. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the uh, real time metrics? Yes. So real time metrics. So we we uh, we're just uh, um, in a conceptual phase on that. We haven't done a lot of uh, development on real time metrics. We have uh, multiple platforms in the company that we plan to use for that. So we use Apache Samsa and uh, uh, our team created a SQL interface on top of Apache Samsa so that you can query uh, streams, streams in real time in SQL, with SQL. So one, one of the possibilities we're looking at is once we have a SQL uh, generation for that, use that for uh, for, for real time as well. And there, are, there are other, there's a fling and things we'll consider. Thank you very much.